We all seek power, but all except one will become its slave. In modern-day Monian, the vast majority of those sentenced to capital punishment are sent to war. To be granted such a glorious death is Monian's final show of benevolence to these unforgivable criminals. Fovius is locked in a prison wagon along with several other convicts, and watches the world outside the iron bars with a blank expression. It's a desolate scene. Aside from countless bones of the dead, there is naught but blackened earth as far as the eye can see. To this end, Fovius had fought and achieved greatness in battle. These attainments meant he would soon ascend to the role of captain of the Monian Empire's Eastern Front or so he had thought. Instead, the son of a high-ranking official was given this role instead by his father. Taken over by rage, Fovius sought out this official's son to face him in a duel, yet could not hold back his anger and slayed the man, which in turn led to his imprisonment. From then on he would be subjected to inhuman treatment as a convicted prisoner. In place of the usual soldier equipment and fine armor, the convicts are given no defensive equipment and only a dull sword each, yet their duty is to stave off the first and most savage wave of demon forces. The demon armies are brutal without compare. Far from warfare, the scene more resembles a slaughter, and Fovius comes to understand that his only chance of surviving this cruel massacre would be to become one of them. While his arms are now heavy from the extended fighting, his legs weak, a sheer force of will drives him to keep going. Before he realized it, Fovius has already distanced himself from the main squadrons to reach a most mysterious formation of huge stones. He can just about make out what seems to be a purplish glow, a light shining not far from him. He finds something most peculiar laid before him among the mysterious stones, it appears to be a cage. He hesitates for a second before deciding to take it with him, yet upon touching it, the odd light inside is extinguished and fades away. On the trek back, Fovius comes across a small company of soldiers who have also separated from the main forces. They greet him warmly, while not keen on taking such weak men as his comrades, Fovius knows that he would never survive all alone out in the land of despair. A burning hatred for the fact that his powers are so limited fills his mind. Listen to your heart Fovius. You desire great power. The ethereal murmuring continues drifting toward Fovius, and floating around within his head. It's then that he finally notices that what seems to be a soul, is held within the cage he's holding. Fovius continues on with the small group for several days, the words of that caged spirit echoing throughout his mind. He wraps the cage's chains tightly around his shoulders, bringing it near to form as close a connection as possible. He even begins conversing directly with the spirit, no longer able to hold back his burning desire for power. The day grows darker, and the ridges of the Rantha Mountains are bathed in the setting sun. The men build a bonfire and huddle around its flames, sharing mugs of moni and liquor as they stave off the biting cold. As per usual, Phobius sits a distance away from the crowd. By now, he's already made his decision, and cannot bear to associate with such halfwits any longer. What are you waiting for? Sacrifice your eyes unto me, and power shall be yours. This time, when the voice begins to sound again, Fovius doesn't hesitate. He stands and raises the cage up high, and within it the spirit forms an eye that opens to beam forth a blinding purple light. This beam of ultimate power floods throughout Fovius' body and spreads throughout the vicinity. So strong is the light that it burns out his very eyes. Fovius is now a man reborn. He descends upon the soldiers, slaughtering every last man. The new strength flowing within him makes Fovius feel truly unequaled in power. Phobius casts a condescending glance at the cage, and snorts disdainfully. Then, he sets out once more on a journey south toward the abyss.